Hello, everyone. Introducing myself, my name is Sosi Avakian Mardirosian. I have many years and vast experiences in different departments and medical field of nursing. For many years, I have practiced in different aspects from medical surgical, psychology, intensive care units, operating rooms, dermatology, rheumatology, oncology, plastic surgery, rehabilitation, gastroenterology, and eventually I have worked many years in renal ICU and advanced myself as a nephrology nursing specialist and working different areas of renal ICU, including renal replacement modalities of all sorts, the dialysis modalities in acute, in chronic, as well as renal transplants. From 1997, I was given the opportunity to start the home hemodialysis and advance and excel the patient outcomes at Toronto General Hospital in Toronto, Canada. I had the privilege to work along with amazing and astounding directors such as Dr. Stanley Fenton and Dr. Robert Richardson. They were both in charge and the head of home hemodialysis, the chronic in-center dialysis, the acute in-house hospital dialysis and the renal replacement therapies, which I was working along with them all those years and started working in the home hemodialysis and implementing the home hemo daily dialysis and the nocturnal daily dialysis with the urging um, persuasion of one of my young patients who was um, chronic schedule of home hemodialysis at the time. With the patient's outcomes and with my keen observation and with my critical thinking diagnostic observation, along the months of excelling the patient outcomes in the modality of the daily home hemodialysis and the nocturnal daily dialysis of home hemodialysis modality, I have achieved such outcomes that were not even expected to be a reality and achievable. According to Dr. Fenton, at the time he was the head of the home hemodialysis and the transplant team, the renal transplant team. And even Dr. Robert Richardson, who were the professors of university in nephrology, and he kept telling me, it is non-thinkable and non-achievable what I was trying to prove with the outcomes of the patients. And depending on my observations of the outcomes of patients and this particular patient who couldn't even make fists and he was with calcifications of the peripheral arterial branch and had all symptoms of claudication and after almost five months, four to five months into the modality of the daily nocturnal dialysis, the patient was able to 
make a fist, mow his lawn, and was able to walk distances where he couldn't even have imagined to do so for many years on chronic dialysis. With the data collection as for research purposes, I had started collecting all the data of the outcomes and against the urging of my directors and against their expectations, I was able to do the Doppler tests on the patient, on this particular patient, who was able to do things that he wasn't able to do before with his claudication and the peripheral um, arterial calcification. As a result, with the Dopplers, preferred Dopplers, we were able to prove that not only the claudication and the peripheral calcification was improved, it was actually 100% reversed. And within six months, the patient was able to live unrestricted life on nocturnal daily dialysis. I was the first, per se, with my directors, Richardson and Fenton, I was the first to prove claudication could be 100% reversed with the nocturnal daily modality and or the daily home hemodialysis modalities. From 2001, we were able to introduce the outcomes, not only the claudication reversal, but also the LV functions, the systemic relaxation, the blood pressure controls, and even one of my patient, newlywed, was able to have a healthy baby boy with 40 weeks of gestation on nocturnal daily hemodialysis at home. After all these outcomes, and of course, presenting all the data to the medical journals and the Global Mail and the daily papers in Canada, most pharmaceutical and uh, public attention was drawn to the modality. We were able to penetrate and excel in teaching and directing to implement the modality in several different countries, including Alberta, Calgary, London, Ontario, Ottawa, Montreal, and even in Europe with the symposiums of Dr. Ronco, who was the head of nephrology in Europe, Italy. I was able to introduce the outcomes to the European nephrology team and started implementing the programs in Torino, Italy, Netherlands, Den Haag, Denmark, and Hungary with the same patient outcomes, with the same modality that was implemented in Toronto General Hospital in Toronto, Canada by myself from 1997. With the data at hand, I was able to even entice Dr. Charlie Chan who wanted to get involved with the research aspect of the nephrology and the home hemodialysis, the daily home hemodialysis and the nocturnal daily dialysis to excel and present all these data to the public and to the world. From 2003, we were able to publish all of the data that I had collected from the outcomes of these patients. I had almost 100, 
50 patients at that time and single-handedly training and implementing the programs for these patients who were the active career people who needed this modality to survive and be able to live their unrestricted, normal life without having to be dependent on clinic schedules and so forth. They were able to self-schedule themselves at home and be able to provide their own dialysis at home under our supervision, myself, Dr. Fenton, and Dr. Richardson, and eventually Dr. Charlie Chan. There are many, many medical journal publications along with Dr. Chan, who was able to basically provide it, all the data of my observations and findings to be published in the medical journals, the American Medical Journals and the PubMed and so forth. In 2005, I was persuaded after a whole year by a biomedical person who had witnessed the outcomes of the patients and the modality outcomes, which superseded beyond the outcomes of transplanted patients themselves. In 2005, I was basically persuaded to come to California and to be able to provide the same modality and implement the same modality for our cultural people and for the American renal failure population that needed it so badly. And until that time, there was no home hemodialysis available in the state of California, particularly in the Southern California. I want to reflect on the practice of nephrology and nursing in nephrology, comparing the Canadian experience and the knowledge being provided to the nurses and the nursing uh, realm as a nephrology educated personnel and compare that to the Californian modalities and the clinics and the nurses and technicians that are being provided to take care of renal failure patients. In Canada, you had to have many years of experience as a registered nurse before an intensive care unit experiences, at least two to three years. And from there to be educated and trained in nephrology, you had to acquire and pass the courses provided as a nephrology nursing. And for two years to be with preceptors to work along in chronic dialysis units in house and in acute in house dialysis, providing to the acute patients after the two year of experience in the chronic area, and be able to gradually provide the renal replacement therapies as acute nurse in nephrology. There's very strict supervision and observation and acknowledgement of how a single patient, a renal failure patient who is in need of dialysis and they're at the clinic and being provided dialysis treatment with their chronic traditional machines. Here in California, with my experience of working throughout every single hospitals, I would say from San Bernardino to Lancaster, all the way to Gardena, all of the 
entities, UCLA, USC, PIH, Kaiser Permanente, all of these hospitals, and Simi Valley, and Verdugo, all of these hospitals, and chronic clinics all around in Southern California. I have been very disappointedly come to the realization and noticing how little and how unprofessional the technicians, the nurses, they are given permission to work in the clinic areas of dialysis, even in the acute areas of dialysis, there's a huge lack of knowledge and expertise of even registered nurses who are being taught to become nephrology nurses as such with all the experiences needed within three months, maybe not even. Similarly with the technicians, which I have been part of, and people who've been trained by me have always said, we've learned so much that we didn't know, even knowing about dialysis, people who've been working many years in dialysis around the realm of clinics, the chronic clinics and acute dialysis. It is pathetic because these patients are human beings like you and I, and God forbid if we had to be hooked to a machine. And what I've absorbed, that if you needed to be dialyzing in an environment that is supposedly to be safe, and in any environment when there's a dialysis being provided, dialysis itself is considered to be an acute entity. Whether it's provided at home, whether it's provided in chronic dialysis units, or it's provided in the acute hospitals, in-house clinics, or at the bedside in ICUs, wherever it may be. And what I have witnessed with my experiences of all these areas, including even the corporate offices, the corporate clinics, and the companies, it is devastating to see nurses who are not even able to observe what the patient is needing at the time. And there's critical presentations of patients. Instead of practicing their knowledge and providing safe dialysis treatment to the patients, all they could do is just call 911 and get them to the hospital. And sometimes 911 doesn't even save the patient's life. I have a very vivid memory of an episode that had happened right in front of my eyes in a chronic dialysis unit where the RN um, was not even aware that a patient who had just basically became unresponsive sitting upright in a, pa in a reclining chair. And instead of reaching to put the patient's head down to check the blood sugar, obviously that patient was a diabetic. And I had found out from the wife sitting beside the patient. Instead of questioning, she was meddling around to call 911 and wouldn't even allow me to check the blood sugar of the patient, which was 57 at that time. Of course, I had put down his head of the chair so that he could also receive some saline, bring up his blood pressure. These are preliminary steps of responding to a hypoglycemic reaction. It was a pure hypoglycemic episode that was happening and instead of attending to the patient's need as immediate response when a patient is hypoglycemic, they do go hypotensive as well. And they get that 
unresponsive, glassy look in their eyes, which is very, very common walking around the chronic dialysis units. I've caught on so many, even technicians sitting beside the patient when the patient is just gazing and the glaze in the eye is not even responsive when you're looking at them and saying, hi, how are you today? And there's no response. And yet the technicians sitting beside them, all they could do is just push button dialysis and tend to the machine itself rather than the patient sitting on the chair receiving the dialysis. And I just responded to the nurse, the RN, who was very adamant of calling 911. I even told her the patient came through right away after giving him a spoonful or a pack of sugar under his tongue after he was opening his eyes and trying to respond. Even if that RN had called the 911, that patient would have been dead by the time he got to the ER the emergency department, and it, that is very obvious of the episodes that we misjudge and misdiagnose because there's no critical thinking, there's no observation that is being provided to the patients in those clinics. There's only one RN responsible with the technicians, one to three, and perhaps even four in these days where Patients are being neglected completely. And I could see, I could even recite so many episodes that I have been personally witnessing. Apart from that, even the modality that's been given, provided to the patient as dialysis, it seems nowadays more so Companies are more interested in making money, saving money, instead of saving lives and giving proper dialysis to patients, the renal population, who truly need the utmost and the best dialysis provision. Instead of saving on their dialysate with the solutions that they prepare, the proportions of the bicarb as with the acid and the RO water, the acid proportion to the bicarb proportion, they always, always, and always try and save to save their money instead of providing dialysis flows that are really needed by the patient. We see 500 ML dialysis flow, dialysate flows, as opposed to 700, 800, which it should be with the pump speeds of 400, 350s, 300 and above. Dialysate formulation has to be two and a half, two and a half or one and a half minimum of times of the blood flow. Patients who don't understand and a lot of patients' families who are lay people who don't understand, and they're lectured differently. They're given all kinds of excuses because they don't want to give up making their little corner for their extra money. They're only pennies, and they're counting their pennies for the sake of the patient's lives and to give them quality of life. And that's why every dialysis patient that go in and they come up with complications and circulatory problems, peripheral circulation problems, heart problems, and lung problems with edema all around their bodies without being seen by the nephrologist, but only once a month and once a week, maybe a nurse practitioner could go in and see those patients. And the nurses and technicians who are working in those clinics are not even able to recognize a simple preliminary episodes 
of hypoglycemia, hypotension episode where they can save those patients. And if the patient had passed out and by the time they realize the patient had a heart attack or being hypoxic passes out and they're not able to save that patient, they can give all kinds of excuses to make it as an episode that was probably the patient had a heart attack. I want to urge families and patients to be aware of the kind of dialysis modalities they're being provided and to consult two, three different nephrologists to understand whether or not they're being given the proper choices for their dialysis to begin with, and also if they're being given the kind of dialysis that they really truly need. Even the technicians, when they're accessing the AV accesses, the fistulas of patients, I call them butchering those AV accesses because they don't care. They inject their lidocaine, which already ruins the access itself, and they're just blindly sometimes going in to find that vein and giving the proportion of the needle insertion where it shouldn't be more than two, two and a half inches apart. And yet they put those needles not even a three quarter inch away from each other. And they think that they're able to give proper dialysis outcomes for that patient. That patient is just having 50% of recirculation of the blood and only that portion that's between the two tips of the needle is being dialyzed. And that is why recently a patient going to emergency hospital and being diagnosed with his renal from dialysis clinic, instead of going to the dialysis clinic for his dialysis, he was a, ended up in the emergency and a nephrologist or ER doctor who was assessing his values and his outcomes, he ended up being intensive care unit. And he was told that had he ever had dialysis until then, the patient had been on dialysis almost over a year. And you can imagine a patient who comes from dialysis clinic, who's been on dialysis for a year and a half, to an emergency department with pulmonary edema, with heart problems and edema all over his feet and his whole body, and his creatinine urea being completely out of norms and being asked if he was ever dialyzed, you could already imagine what kind of dialysis that person was having because his needles were so close to each other that he wasn't even dialyzing, period. And with dialysate flows of 500, with a blood flow of a 300 or 350 or even 400, that patient is not getting enough dialysis at all. Last year, state of California, they health department actually was pursuing to mandate that dialysis staff, registered nurses, technicians, that there should be more demand on registered nurses to be more so responsible for dialysis patients in the chronic clinics and everywhere with the renal failure population to be able to get proper dialysis, the home hemodialysis or the hemodialysis that's being provided in acute in-house 
hospitals and in chronic dialysis clinics. I have come across patients who have had 37% of kidney function, 21% of kidney function, the 21% was a homeless, and the 37% was an elderly lady who didn't know what the hell was going on after an episode of a heart attack or a heart condition. She was put on dialysis and never ever revisited the idea that that patient could have her own kidney function to survive without dialysis. I even had a 37% another patient who had, again, post-angioplasty, had gone into renal failure and renal shock. He was on dialysis for six months. He still GFR was within 30s. 35 to 37 percent, and yet he was still being pursued to be kept on dialysis. This is not humanitarian way of working for the purpose of medical oat for nephrologists to give oat to help and provide proper dialysis to patients and whoever needs dialysis to get the proper dialysis. This is just money-making business for those nephrologists who do not understand their humanitarian oat, and they can never keep their promises. I just want to say, God forbid there's a strong karma, and the universe will never, ever forgive anyone of these nephrologists, and in turn, they will be on that same reclining chair with the same push-button dialysis technicians and nurses and RNs that they think they are able to provide under their supervision, the kind of dialysis. They will receive the same kind of dialysis that they deserved as they provided to other patients and to all human beings around the world. I just want to make every single person realize that this is a very sad reality that has been practiced, particularly in California, state of California, which I have witnessed, at least in the Southern California, from all the hospitals, every one of them. There are very few, very few numbered of nephrology experienced nurses who come from out of California, from other states that have been provided good knowledge and good practice. And the real nephrology approach, even in needling and accessing AV fistulas, there are the lifelines for these patients and they should be protected. And these patients are believed that even transplant can save them. But transplant is another modality. It's just another modality for these patients. I hope every single person who has to go through dialysis be able to get enough information and search for more information. And you can always call, call me, 818-634-0656, and I will be more than pleased to help anyone and to refer them to the proper nephrologists that I believe are practicing the right practice for providing dialysis and being the true nephrologist to their patients. I wish you all health and strength in pursuing to claim your rights as human beings and be able to have a safe life and a healthy life.
God bless you all.